Hello everyone, Steve Goodwin here with my anchor test video number 149. Now, many anchor manufacturers create their shanks simply by cutting the shape out from plate stock. Now, this is a very economical way to produce an adequately strong and fairly narrow shank that's able to penetrate seabeds fairly well. However, the downside is that you're left with a flat face along the underside and leading edge of the shank. It's almost universally believed that if that was sharpened into a point, that you will aid in the anchor's performance. Now, this is a roll bar Rockna anchor, and I've shown in many, many other tests where seabed that gets sort of clogged or choked up here in the fluke uh, causes it to pop out and not make much holding power in some seabeds. Uh, so the, a theory would be, well, if we could sharpen this forward face or this leading edge of this, maybe we could get better performance. Uh, the Rockna company later came out with the Vulcan anchor, and it indeed has a sharp leading edge. Now, no matter how they made this, whether it was machined or forged or uh, whatever you do, it's going to be more costly to produce than an equal strength uh, cutout from plate shank. So what I'd like to do today is try to find out just how much does the sharpness of the, of the, of the shank uh, how much does it have affect the performance? And then maybe we can maybe decide, is it worth the extra cost in producing that kind of a shank? So what I've done is I've modified both of these anchors and done a bunch of tests. For the Vulcan, I defeated it, or I unsharpened the shank by taking this hose that has been slit, and I applied it to the leading edge and wrapped it with tape to ineffectively make this a blunt leading edge. For the roll bar anchor, I spatula it on a fairing compound. I use Dura Glass, which is basically Bondo with glass fibers, makes it strong. Smeared it onto the leading edge and very carefully shaped it into a nice V shape. So I did uh, four different seabeds, multiple pulls with and without the leading edge treatments. I did it all in one day. I had good GPS tracks so that I could place and set the anchors right next to where they had been tested previously with the treatments. So good back-to-back -back tests. Let's get out onto the water and see just what happens. We will start things off with the Rockna anchor in its unmodified condition here in the soft mud seabed. This anchor normally does quite well here, and in this case, it was holding 195 pounds pretty solid. Then at 240 pounds of pull, the anchor started moving fairly quickly. We don't get to see it because the camera plunged underneath the seafloor, but when the camera came up, we'll see that the anchor had a full release, has a big blob of mud in its hand, and is almost upside down, and it never did reset. That's Again, that's a pretty unusual. This anchor has uh, normally has better performance than that here. I'll note that there was no sticks or anything in that blob of seabed. It was just pure, soft mud. So now I've got that mud ball cleaned off, and we'll give the anchor another try. Again, this is the standard Rockna with no leading edge treatment. Uh, this was far better holding. It was 480 pounds with zero on the GPS, maybe just a little bit of creeping forward. The anchor released, reset, and repeated it, 480 again. So if I take all three of those, two 480 pulls and a 195, I get an average of 385 pounds, and that's what we'll use for the rating for the Rockna with, an, with a no leading edge treatment. And now we'll look at the anchor with the sharpened leading edge treatment. And it was the same as that second try th without the leading edge treatment, in that it was 480 pounds of uh, zero speed on the GPS, had a breakout, and it was able to reset itself and repeat the performance. So on the one hand, it looks like it, the leading edge treatment did not change much. But if we include that first pull where the anchor broke out at 195 without the treatment, then we could say that this is an improvement, but I'll just say that it's probably a small factor for this seabed. And now we'll move on to the Vulcan anchor. This is its unmodified condition. Of course, it comes with a sharpened leading edge, so we'll do that first. Uh, the anchor sets initially just fine. Everything's upright and all A-OK. -okay. The anchor was holding at 240 pounds of pull, but then at 315 it started moving faster and faster and eventually had a full release. We'll see that the anchor is exactly on its side, uh, and the anchor was in, unable to reset. So then it got things cleaned off and gave it another try. 
This time it does not hold as much. It was solid at only 195 pounds of pull, and then at 240 it began moving. Same result, a, a breakout, and here the anchor is mostly on its side, maybe even slightly upside down. And then after later, more, more and more pulling, the anchor is fully inverted. It just precisely upside down, hopelessly in that state, no reset. So if we average those two poles, that was 240 and 195, we get 218 pounds. And for the Vulcan in the blunt condition, what I found initially was a hold of 195 pounds, then a full release, followed by a reset, and a perfect repeat of that first pull. It was 195 once again. Uh, I guess my theory is that the maybe slightly less ability to penetrate meant that it didn't pack quite as much seabed into the fluke, which allowed it to reset. But uh, overall, probably not a big change for the blunt leading edge on the Vulcan in this seabed. And now I've moved over to the cobble sand test site. This is a seabed that consists with a thin layer of golf ball sized cobblestones on top of quite pure sand. I've never seen any binder or any kind of coagulating material stuck to the anchors. They always come up clean. And what happens is the anchors will drag along for 100 feet or more at a very steady uh, steady load. And it was 240 pounds that the unmodified anchor would resist. And here is the next try, but this time with the, uh, the, the leading edge condition and the sharp, sharp condition. And it was exactly the same. If you go back and watch, you'll see the same amount of shank showing. So the same depth of bury, same 240 pounds of resistance. Absolutely identical. We can see here on retrieval that there's just nothing attached to the anchor. So let's just go ahead and say for this seabed, a, a sharp leading edge on this Rockna makes absolutely no difference. Here is the Vulcan in the cobble sand seabed. Uh, first we'll show the anchor in the unmodified or sharp leading edge condition. The anchor was pretty solid at 315 pounds of hold. And then at higher higher thrust numbers, it would drag continuously all throughout this nearly 100 foot long pulling track. And now for the Vulcan with its leading edge in the blunt condition, I noticed a definite change. It was not as uh, good a holding. I, I recorded 240 pounds of pull. Uh, higher thrust numbers would have a steady motion. At first glance, I was thinking maybe the anchor had buried deeper. But remember, the shank is wrapped with black tape to hold that hose on there. So that that's the deal. Um, it just wasn't as visible. But no question, it's not as good an anchor with that blunt leading edge. Okay, now we've moved over to the clean, loose sand seabed. We'll start with the Rockna in the unmodified or blunt condition. And the anchor was fairly steady at 380 pounds of thrust. And then at higher thrust numbers, it would just simply drag faster. No pop-outs or no roll-outs. And it was able to repeat that. Note how much shank is visible or how high up it is. Now we'll try the anchor with the modified or sharpened leading edge and right away we'll see that the shank is now buried much more deeply and it has a corresponding much higher hold number. It was 480 pounds rather than 380. So for this seabed there is no doubt a significant improvement can be had for this anchor with a sharp leading edge. This is the Vulcan anchor here in the clean, loose sand seabed. First try is with the anchor in the original, unmodified, sharp leading edge condition, and it is as good as it gets. There's just a tiny little bit of motion here at full boat thrust, which is over 1,000 pounds of pull. Now the anchor has the leading edge hose attached to it, so it's nice and blunt, and it's night and day difference. We'll notice that the anchor never fully buries. Uh, it was holding about 480 pounds, and it had a release. Uh, this next try, it was 735 pounds before it started moving and had another full release. So night and day difference. Uh, the, the blunt leading edge definitely uh, was hindering the anchor here in this clean, loose sand seabed. Last seabed we'll look at is the Sandy Mud site. This is where the roll bar Rockna anchors have had real trouble in all my years of testing, and it's no different today. So this is with the blunt 
uh, unmodified condition at first hold was only 240. Second one was 315 pounds, both followed by full releases, big blobs of mud. And that's just pretty much standard procedure for these anchors in this seabed. Now, here's the first pull with the modified or sharp leading edge. And we're going to see something that I don't believe I have ever seen before out of hundreds of sets of these anchors in this seabed. Already, the shank has disappeared, and if you watch the roll bar there on the left part of the screen, you're going to see it just disappear right there. And again, that's the first time I've ever seen a, ro a roll bar Rockna anchor do that in this seabed. And it's doing it with no, no significant chain either, so it's got a pretty good angle of pull. In any event, it was holding... Uh, 380 pounds when in that first pull, and then the next time it was 240. So once again, the sharp leading edge on the Rockna has made a significant improvement. And now for the Vulcan here in the sandy mud. Uh, first try will be in the unmodified or sharp leading edge condition, and the anchor is just perfect. It's holding full boat thrust here. It's over a thousand pounds. Anchor's buried out of sight. Doesn't get any better. And now we'll try it with the blunt leading edge, and it is a completely different story. The anchor appears to be almost fully buried, but the holding power just isn't there. This one was 480 pounds, fairly solid, then a full release. And then the next deployment was uh, similar in that it looked, looked like it was well buried, but even less holding. It was only 315 pounds holding, and then at 380, a full pop-out release. So more, more than half of its holding power has been sacrificed by adding that blunt leading edge. Well, if there was any doubt as to whether a sharp leading edge shank could produce a meaningful performance increase, I think I've put that to bed. Now, it's not the case for all seabeds. There's certainly some where there didn't seem to be any change at all. I think we could safely say that for seabeds that lack structure or cohesiveness, seabeds that can just flow around structures such as maybe really soft mud or a really clean, pure sand that can just uh, again, flow right around a structure probably doesn't matter very much. But for the seabeds that do have structure or that can be clumped or clog an anchor, there's no doubt it makes a difference. Uh, another seabed type that it probably really does help is a really hard crusty sand or really hard sand. Now I don't have those kind of seabeds anywhere near my test area, but I can only guess that a knife sort of like structure is going to be able to cut through that much more readily. So, if you want to buy an anchor with a shank that has a sharp leading edge, you can buy a Vulcan today here in June of 2023 all day long. However, if you want to buy a roll bar anchor with a sharpened leading edge shank, I don't know of one. But that's about to change because the Rockna Company is about to release a new roll bar anchor. They're calling it a Mark II, and it will have a shank that has... Uh, a similar profile as the old version, but it will have the Vulcan cross section, including a sharp leading edge. That anchor's got many, many other changes that all look pretty smart to me, and I will not be surprised if it outperforms the old version handily. So that's it. Uh, all I got for the leading edged treatment video. Before I sign off, let me show you how the mods I've made to Panope's keel and fuel system are coming along. So first of all, the Max Prop has been cleaned up, repacked with grease and reinstalled. And I actually replaced the drive shaft. Uh, that was, uh, the old shaft was still pretty good, but there was some wear in the area of the cutlass bearing. So I thought, what the heck, now's a good time. So that's all nice and fresh. Uh, also the windows and all the, the modifications of the keel, that's all been fared and painted over. So it's looking like new again. Uh, speaking of the fairing, uh, my aperture always was pinched or sort of a pointed trailing edge which is good for water flow but there was some facets and some vertical welds and it was all quite ugly uh, the interface between this horizontal plate and the vertical was just a hard 90 degree corner with a ugly weld i went ahead and i fared this i used quick fare which is an epoxy based filler works good with aluminum and all these joints all got fared fairly nicely so i now have as clean of a hydro hydrodynamic exit from the keel as possible. Uh, speaking of fairing, I also did a little bit to the rudder as well. This triangle 
shape here uh, ahead of the the uh, the the axis of rotation of the rudder. I added that years ago, but it was a fairly crude weld along uh, its interface. That all got smoothed over. So we've got good water flow, 100% across that part of the rudder. Also from the original build back 50 years ago, the builders had a, a seam between the rudder shaft and the plate, and it was right along this fat portion of the rudder. It's just the wrong place to have a lump. Anyway, I went ahead and, and fared that as well all the way down. So I'm looking forward. Maybe, if I'm lucky, I might notice a little bit of an improvement in the rudder effectiveness, maybe even a tiny bit of motoring efficiency increase as well. Things are moving along nicely down below. I do have the engine reinstalled and the systems are coming back together. Uh, I've had to really revamp the entire power system. Uh, start battery was moved from starboard side here to the port bulkhead. Uh, battery switches have been relocated, all new uh, cabling. Uh, it's not my first choice to co-mingle electrical equipment and saltwater plumbing, but that's just the way the ball bounces. Uh, look for a splash guard or some sort of a shield between the raw water strainer and those electrical switches. Wouldn't want to dunk those in salt water. Here on the starboard side, we have the day tank has been installed. There's a big ray core around the corner. I uh, haven't quite hooked up the plumbing yet, but we'll get there soon. Um, notice these two pumps here. This uh, blue colored pump, that was the original standard bilge pump. And here is the transfer pump that transfers fuel from that new t keel tank into the day tank. Now the actuation of these is um, well fairly clever, I thought. So the, the, the bilge pump was always actuated from up above here. What you did is you opened up a, a, a lid here in the seat and you take this handle and go ahead and pump away. So when I was trying to find a location for that transfer pump, Boy, I was looking around everywhere, down here by my feet, all kinds of things. And then it finally hit me. Well, just mount it uh, opposing the bilge pump and modify its socket so that the same handle can be used for either pump. I figure it's going to take about five minutes or so of slow pumping to make, a say, an eight or ten gallon transfer. Now it only happen occasionally as this is a fairly uh, low fuel burning boat. Here's the front side of that battery switch installation. So rather than a one, two, both switch, which is very common, I prefer to have three separate on off switches. The first one controls the house bank. This is a combined switch. And then this is the start battery on off switch. The far switch disconnects the engine block and the 12 volt negative bus. That's an aluminum boat thing where it's best to have things floating or as uh, disconnected as possible from the seawater. And it's very, very difficult to achieve a 100% isolation of a typical uh, marine diesel engine. If nothing else, the raw water cooling circuit provides a path between the engine block and the salt water. So, the poor man's way to isolate this is whenever the engine's not running, I just disconnect the block entirely from the DC system. And now looking straight down into the aft part of the engine space, uh, we're looking at those plates way down at the bottom. That is the top plates of the keel tank. There's the new drive shaft, and I've also switched over to a dripless shaft seal. Formerly, this boat has always had a good old-fashioned bronze stuffing box, but what I found was that the bronze was likely reacting or causing a reaction with the inside of the stern tube. I saw some very, very shallow pitting. Probably lasts for many, many decades, but I didn't like it. Uh, so I wanted to have a bronze-free uh, uh, stuffing box, so I went with this PSS uh, a dripless unit. And I think it's going to be nice. For once, I will have a potentially a completely bone dry bilge as there really isn't any other leaks aboard this vessel. It is a very compact space. There's lots of stuff going on. In fact, there's going to be a two inch bilge pump hose coming right up through the middle of that. And then there'll be some house battery. Well, at least one house battery will go on that platform. Okay, now we'll sign off from this anger test. Uh, tune in next month. There will be more, hopefully, interesting material. Big thanks for everybody watching. Even bigger for those that donate. As always, anchor safely. So long.